Hey people, a quick tyre noise review between three different tyres. One of them, the standard Grand Trex. We will also compare some roof rack noise between the Roller and the Rhino. Falcon Wild Peaks, of course, but on the same vehicle, a dusty bronze 150 Prado. And of course, the world famous KO2s. This is the set that's done 30,000 kilometres on our dusty bronze Prado. Still plenty of tread there. And let's get started and let you know which one's the noisiest and which one's the quietest and which one grips the best and which one slips in the wet. We've also got this set of KO2s. This is the set that comes off the 120 Prado in pretty good condition. We've got an old Ratty set as well. So we've got a lot of experience with KO2s, three vehicles running them in general. Now, looking at these wild peaks, I would not drive and review them based on this vehicle because it's a Hilux. Hiluxes are always a bit noisier. And, you know, these ones could be a bit feathered already, depending on the wheel alignment, because wheel alignment causing tyre wear is often what actually causes problems and wear noises from wear with tyres. So this dusty bronze Prado is the one that uh, we normally run the KO2s on for trips. At the moment, we've got the stock Grand Trek tyres on, and they are such a massive advantage in so many ways. We've all got some really ratty old seven, eight year old, really ripped up KO2s for harsh testing in the wet. You'd think when they're eight years old, they're all hard and slippery, but to be quite honest, it's not what I've found. It's absolutely amazing. When I do comparisons, I like to be fair as possible. And firstly, I like to say, um, we've got the roller Titan tray on the roof by choice, okay? We've got the um, BFG KO2s on all three vehicles by choice. We're not sponsored by KO2s, BFG. They don't give us tires or money or anything like that. And if they did, we'd still tell you the truth anyway. It'd be awesome if these companies want to give me tires because if they're so good, you've got nothing to lose because I'm going to tell everybody how good they are. And if they're no good, I'll just tell you they're no good and we won't worry about um, telling everyone how average they are. But anyway, look, on this vehicle, just quickly, I'll say we've done approximately 30,000 Ks on KO2s. And in my experience, KO2s are always quiet. We've run them on 120 Prado for many years. Um, we've got them on the Hilux. The KO2s, I've never had a problem with noise. They've probably, if you could somehow measure noise that you can't hear. Look, my hearing's pretty good, and this is what I'm going to tell you, because you've got to be careful who you listen to when they tell you, oh, these tyres are really quiet, because some people, I guess, they've got hearing problems. Perhaps, you know, like when you get older, you have problems with sight and hearing impairment, that sort of thing. So maybe they can't hear their noisy roof racks, or they can't hear their tyres. So just be careful about, you know, what you listen to from there's so many there's hundreds and thousands of different people and some people a lot of people probably have probably got some hearing issues so if somebody can hear some noise coming from something then that's probably more likely what the fact of the matter is so the reason we can do a really good comparison is recently actually i got to ride for hundreds of kilometers in a uh, another dusty bronze 150 prado very comparable and what I noticed was, so with my KO2s on this vehicle, I don't hear any tire noise whatsoever. With my good KO2s on the 120 Prado, I don't hear any tire noise whatsoever. I don't even hear tire noise in the Hilux. I heard tire noise with the Coopers. I had some Cooper AT3Ws, not bad noise, but there was a little bit of noise there. They were noisier than the KO2s. These tires are of, that, are, that you're looking at in the picture are obviously super quiet because they are those stock standard road tires, that sort of thing. That's what they are. Now, um, so recently I went in this other vehicle with the Wild Peak AT3Ws and they're a brand new set of tires. So they're not worn. You can't blame wheel alignment causing wear and feathering and that sort of thing. And 100% swear on the Bible from my heart, swear on my family's lives, my own life, and everybody in Oz Prado crew and Oz Hilux crew on YouTube, I promise to the best of my knowledge, I heard that Rhino roof rack, I heard wind noise from that. I do not hear noise. Let, let me give you a scale. If a stock standard vehicle with nothing on it had zero wind noise, which, you know, there's always wind noise. As you build up speed, you can hear, it's just general noise that you can't really put a finger on, if you know what I mean. It's, you you kind of don't notice it. If you're sitting still, it's quiet. If you're doing 100 k's, that's why you've got to turn the radio up. But it's not a specific noise. Now, um, and let's say road tyres, zero, no roof rack, zero. If you added a roller Titan tray, I would say that, let's call it 10% to give you an example. 10% is what that roller Titan tray would give you in noise. What I heard from the 
um, Rhino, and I don't know the de didn't take any much notice. I, I drive vehicles all the time, and I notice Rhino. I, sometimes I hear noise, and I get out back to the workshop, and I go, oh, yeah, Rhino, you know, right? And there's other ones. Sometimes there's just cross roof bars on roofs that make a lot of noise, okay? So there's maybe a bit of luck in there, but I've got two roller Titan trays. One was mounted with a LAPX 008, no noise. One's mounted with a LRS 34. Two of them were mounted like that, no noise. And now one's mounted with the ridge mount system, no noise, okay? So to the best of my knowledge, there's no noise. I'm gonna call it 10%. If I listen really hard, I could probably go, I reckon I can hear the fact that there's a roof rack on the roof, but there's no annoying noise that you would hear. If you try and listen to it, you might find some, go, yeah, I'm pretty sure my roof rack's still there, but you can hardly tell. Where with the Rhino, I'm gonna say this one on, on the latest vehicle, the 2022, 23 Dusty Bronze Prada, similar to this, fair comparison. I'm saying it's more like a 40%. I could actually hear not a really bad, nasty, annoying wind noise, but I could hear some wind noise there enough to go, wow, there's a root. That's, I just find that a little bit annoying. Okay, and the tires, the same thing. So the Wild Peaks, I don't know why. Um, you know, they look to me like they'd be pretty quiet compared to a KO2. But I heard, I'm not talking about bad tyre noise, like, oh, that's bad howling, bad mud tyres, worn tyres type noise. Just a little bit of tyre noise there. So to give you a comparison, KO2 in a brand new condition, or even up until 30,000 kilometres on this car, compared to Wild Peaks on the same sort of vehicle, so the same sort of sound insulation, to be fair as a fair test, and not just 5Ks, 10Ks, hundreds of kilometres on the highway, um, they're certainly both noisier. Now, I want to be really clear. I'm not picking on Wild Peaks. I'm not picking on Rhino. I should probably say I probably am picking on it because the engineer told me, I've told you this story before, that the tight roller Titan tray is stronger. I t checked both. I agreed it's stronger. And of course, it's a lot cheaper. So it's a no-brainer. And that ridge mount system also Australian-made and it's an Australian-made company, uh, Australian-owned company uh, roller, you know, like a lot of other businesses and that that, that group owns. But anyway... Um, these road tyres, obviously dead silent. I don't think, even if you had bad, bad wear on these tyres, I don't think you could hardly get any noise out of them. Um, KO2s, you can certainly get some noise out of them. And that's why we really needed to focus on this set of tyres for a minute, because these tyres are absolute rubbish. They're uh, hand-me-downs from other people that, because I listen to what people say and they say, oh, the KO2s, I, I haven't had these problems in the wet and all these scary, um, things and and I know the majority of people that I know everyone I speak to they haven't had those problems either But you get some people on the internet and I don't doubt their personal experiences But it can sometimes be other things like bad wheel alignments wearing tires. We've demonstrated in other videos I'm not going to go on it too much. It was just more to say these tires they're noisy. Now, they're not very noisy. How noisy would I compare them? They're probably a little bit noisier than the brand new set of Wild Peaks, so not that noisy when I put these wheels and tires on the Hilux, less insulation again, I say they're quite noisy to the point that I'd go, is my rear diff bearings on the way out? Do you know what I mean? And I don't think they are, okay? So that's how noisy a stuffed up, worn, uneven, flogged out tire like this is on a Hilux to the point that Anthony, the vehicle technician, Prada Hilux specialist, I'm sitting there driving along in the Hilux going, wow, there's some real howling coming from the back of that Hilux. Then I put those road tires on that are on the Prado 150 now, and it's all quiet and I go, that's all those tires. So that's how noisy they are. But now I put these tires on the 120 Prado, again, luxury vehicle, Prado, it's got some insulation. I've got to listen for that noise. I'm kind of going, if I listen, I can hear it. So I'd put them kind of similar to the Wild Peaks. You know, the Wild Peaks are probably a little bit quieter, but then again, the 150 Prado might have some better sound uh, deadening type thing, whatever. So. Anyway, I just wanted to give you some preliminary feedback. In my opinion, the Roller Titan tray is heaps stronger. It's Australian, a lot of it's Australian made, especially the ridge mount system. It's better value for money, so it's stronger. And it's better. Don't ask me how it's stronger. You grab it and I grab them and I yank it around on the vehicle and just how much it flexes or moves, whatever. That's how I work out that it's stronger. And because an engineer, that owns and runs a very large uh, design engineering Prado specialist components company in Australia. He got me onto it many years ago, back in uh, 2019, when I was gonna buy a Rhino for one of the vehicles. He said, mate, I'll check out the Titan. I said, Titan, what's that? Never heard of it before. So I do like the Titan from Roller, definitely. Uh, value for money, stronger, where's the problem? Australian owned company and a lot of the components Australian made that sort of thing. The KO2s, I love them for off-road reliability and the outback on the tracks for the traction and all that sort of thing. 
I don't like them for how much extra fuel they use. My experience when they get old and flogged like that, I've been throwing these tires around on the Hilux and the Prados in the wet, probably like you shouldn't, but of course always driving safe. And I haven't had any issues with them at all. It's actually amazing. Of course, if I do, actually, to be honest, if I do hook it enough, I can get them to slide a little bit. And I suppose the positive is I'd rather a tire slide than completely let go. So there's two different types of grip. There's the grip that's there and then all of a sudden it's gone. They're not a tire like that. Um, but you know what? A tire like that, I would highly expect once I start pushing that in the, you know, with the weight of this vehicle in the wet, I'd hope they're going to slide a little bit also, right? So hope this has helped you people, um, you know, with some uh, information. Because a lot of people looking at, should I go to the Wild Peaks? Should I stick with the KO2s? Or I've gone to the Wild Peaks. Oh, did I make a mistake? Whatever. Each to their own. Everyone's got a different purpose. Um, to be quite honest, both of them, I think, are really overpriced at the moment. There's other brands you can look at. So maybe you should be buying neither. So there, if you hung around to then, you might be surprised. Maybe you should be buying neither tyre. Um, personally, I won't be looking at buying Wild Peaks. There's some other tyres that I'd try before I buy another set of KO2s. I'm not happy with the price of the KO2s. I've never paid more than $295 for most of them, and $325 is the most I've ever paid. $350, $360, $380, $400, $420. I think it's an absolute rip-off, and they deserve to be starved of sales. There's plenty of other good tyres out there worth a try at $250 to $280 a tyre. Even if you get a puncher, you can buy another one and still be ahead, that sort of thing. And unless you use it off-road a lot, you're probably not going to have a puncher anyway. Butter bing, butter boom. If you're mainly on the road and you don't go off-road much, you might like to know, I find these tyres here outstanding. They're outstanding on fuel economy. I'm going to give you a bit more information. We'll go into the fuel economy a little bit as well. So um, with the KO2s or the Wild Peaks, I've found that they get about the same economy and they're going to use one to two litres per 100 kilometres more general driving than these tyres. So tyres are not only going to cost you what you pay for them, a lot more to run, okay, than these tyres. So that's very important. These by far are going to be the best on the, on the road and they're also lighter. So again, helping with that fuel economy, okay? These can actually do quite a lot of off-road dry tracks and general dirt roads. If you've got a lot of sharp rocks, you're, a high, you're at higher risk to a puncher, but that doesn't mean you can't do thousands of kilometers before that happens. And that's why you have a spare tire and you don't travel alone. I'm not suggesting everybody should do that, but perhaps for people that only go on a trip once or twice a year, they should keep these tires. They should keep the safety, keep the quietness, keep the fuel economy. Did I, you know, what else do we want to keep? Keep the value for money because they're only about 220, 240 bucks a tire, something like that, I think. Um, and at the end of the day, just put on your other set of wheels and tires with your off-road tires when you do those big outback trips or those weekend trips. You know, if you're mainly on the road and you're not running these tires still, I think you're wasting a lot of money in fuel and you've wasted a lot of money on tires. Last but not least, all my tires are 265, 65, 17. Stick with the standard size is an advantage for so many reasons. There's no need to go up a bigger size. That's old news. That's what a lot of us used to do and what some people still do for a bit of extra clearance on the tracks. And what we've worked out is, you know what? You're talking about 10 millimeters more clearance. It's just ridiculous. And then you're gonna use more fuel because you geared the vehicle up in a lot of cases the vehicle just doesn't work as well. You know, those old tires I've got, that second hand hand-me-down set, we'll call it, I'm still open to receiving hand-me-downs in half decent condition. So if you've got a crappy set of BFG KO2s, 265, either 6517 or 7017, I'm happy to take those off your hands as long as they're reasonable in condition, because I'm still looking for these tires that are so um, terribly slippery and nasty and dangerous in the wet because both myself and all these other people I speak to, and I just speak to just a few Prado owners, um, they haven't had these issues. Now, some people, of course, it's always a compromise. You compare a tyre like this to a tyre like the KO2 that's old, out, worn and flogged, it's certainly not going to grip anywhere near as well. But if you drive within all the standard expectations of a tyre and a vehicle and the road rules, I don't see how you would have a problem if you're sliding. I think you're asking too much of the tyre and um, you probably should need to slow down a bit in the wet. Also look after your tyre pressures, your wheel on, your wheel balance, keep your tyres in good condition, like that one, for peak performance. Thanks for listening, people. That was a bit of a, you know, I might call it 
KO2 versus Wild Peak and Roller Titan versus Rhino or something like that. Anyway, hopefully it helps your people. Anyway, that's what we're here for, trying to help people out. And that little reminder again, if you made it to the end, some people will have the noisiest tyres and go, oh, my tyres are quiet, I don't have any noise. Just remember, they're probably 80% deaf. Same with the roof rack. They might have some horrible roof rack and go, mine doesn't make any noise. Anyway, you know what happened there as well. Same thing. Thanks for listening, people. Catch you later.